everyone. I'm Paulette Morrissey. I'm the mother half of the mother-daughter duo from Tulip Square. And today we're going to be talking about disappearing blocks, the kind that um, you start with squares or triangles or stripes or whatever different basic shape and you make something completely different out of those basic blocks. If you've been quilting a while, you probably know all these techniques, but maybe this video will help you remind you of some you might have forgotten. And if you're new to quilting, you might not know all of these techniques and it's a really neat way to make some intricate looking blocks without doing a lot of intricate tiny cutting and sewing. So we're going to show you four different kinds of blocks you can make today, so let's get started. Okay, to start with we're going to talk about the disappearing blocks, which is one of the most basic disappearing techniques. Um, I'm going to start with just two colors. Make sure they're nicely contrasting so you've got a good contrast when you're putting the pieces together. For each block you're going to need all the same size squares, two, two of each color. So I've, I cut these. These are four and a half inch squares right now. You don't have to use four and a half obviously, but these are four and a half inch squares and I've cut two for each block. Then what you're going to do is Sew along one edge, sew the two together with your right sides together, of course. Press towards the darker side, and you've got two pieces like this. And once you take these two pieces, you're going to put them this way, which makes a nice little checkerboard pattern, and you're going to put them together, and you're going to sew along one edge. Now, when you do that, make sure you nest these two little edges here so that you get a really nice, perfect center square. Okay, so you sew that, press it open, and this seam I would recommend you press it open. So here's one I showed you, and I pressed it open. That gives you a nice smooth edge when you're cutting it up. Now this square is now about eight and a half inches square. So what we're going to do is cut that square into thirds, and because it's not evenly divisible by nine, what I'm going to do is cut in three inches from each of the two sides, leaving two and a half inches in the middle section. Then I'm going to cut three inches down from the top and three inches up from the bottom, which will leave another two and a half inch strip across the middle this direction. All right, we've got this cut into thirds in each way. We've cut here and here, straight down here and straight down here. Now you can take these apart and you can see that your middle sections, all of these, and these are a little bit smaller than those. Now to make your new more complex looking block, all you have to do is switch these around. You take this one and put it this way. This one goes this way. This one goes this way. This one goes this way. You've got a block that looks like that. We'll sew that up and show it to you. All right, first I sewed the three top pieces in a strip the three middle pieces in a strip and the three bottom pieces in a strip. Now if you're new to doing a lot of sewing with a lot of seams, make sure that you alternate which way you press the seams. I press these top and bottom seams towards the center section like this, sorry, towards the center section like this, and I press the, the center one away from the center section so that when you sew these two together, when I take this and put it here and sew this, they will nest nicely with each other. And you can see how you get that nice little, they nestle right next to each other. And that will give you a really nice accurate center pieces. So you need to do that. So next what I'll do is I'll sew that one there and I will sew this one here and that little block will be done. And here we go, this one's all sewn together. And it's all set to go. Now if you made a bunch of those and put them together to be a table runner or a table topper or place mats or a quilt, you'd have a really cute little block that looked more difficult than it actually was. And you can also add sashing and binding and all. So that is our disappearing blocks. Now we're going to show you disappearing stripes. Okay, now we're going to do disappearing strips or stripes. Um, for each finished block you're going to need to make two small blocks and each block is going to be made up of three stripes of one color and three stripes of another color. Now what you have to remember is however long you cut your strips and these are cut six and a half inches long that means your block is going to have to end up to be six and a half inches wide also. So I cut each of these six and a half, uh, one and a half inches wide so that once you sew six of them together 
your block will be six and a half inches wide after you lose the quarter inch on each side. So you take three of this color and three of this color for each block and you sew some squares. And then your squares will look like this with alternating stripes. And you're going to make just two of these. So next you cut your sides all off and your edges all off and make this a nice even six inch square. Yeah. And then you get rid of all your scraps and then you're going to cut this diagonally this way and diagonally this way. So then what it will look like is this. You'll have a piece like this, a piece like this. This is what it will look like after you've cut it. Now once you have two squares completely sewn and cut in fourths like this, then this is where the fun part starts. So you take one of these pieces with the edges going this way like this one here and you take it and you pair it with one of these and you get a cute little square like that. Now you can take this and put it this way and then you can take the same piece from this square with that same wide stripe polka dot strip, put that there and put another one like this. Only I would take the same one from the other side. Oh, we'll get it right. Like this. And then in the opposite sides, you put this one here, and this one here, and this one here, and this one here. And you get that cute little square. Now, if you made four squares to start with, you could end up with four of these the same and four of these the same and all of your square would look the same. So you can also do that. You can also flip each one of these little corners around like this and put all of these pointing to the inside and all of these with the stripes going this way to the outside. And just flip these all around like so. Like so. There, you can put them together like this um, by reversing which ones are going towards the center. This time I've got all of the ones that point towards the center are all going into the center like so. And all of these kind of border pieces are out here like that. But this just gives you an idea of the things you can do with simple stripes. Now I'm going to show you a couple of other versions using stripes. I use six and a half inch strips again because I want my block to be six and a half inches square. These are one and a half inches wide, so six of them will be six and a half inches wide, and it's six and a half inches long. This was a, a honey bun bundle, so I didn't even have to cut the width. I only had to cut them in the six and a half inch pieces. What you do is you take two colors, like I've got all yellow floral and all pink floral. I'm going to sew all the yellow floral together in one square and all of the pink floral together in one square. And then we have what looks like this pink square and a yellow square. Is I'm going to cut them diagonally this way and diagonally this way. And nice and even point to point and then you're going to have four pieces like this. Now you can take this piece and this piece and make a nice little square like that. And you can take this piece and this piece and make a little square like that. And then what I'm doing is taking one that's got the outside edge and the other one that's got all the stripes going this way. So you take one of each and they'll go like that and this one will go like that. Then if you alternate those, I'll put a pink one down here and a pink one up here. A yellow one over here and a yellow one over here. And see what a cute little square that makes. Even though it's a lot of different colors, unlike the first ones that was only using two colors, you get a completely different look by doing this. Now you can see that after sewing four of these squares together, two of the little pink and two of the little yellow with the two triangles on each one, you can put them all with this little framework kind towards the center, or you can put them all with that kind out towards the edge, and it gives you two completely looking two completely different little blocks. Kind of cute, aren't they? Then you can also make all of them the same color 
and have something like this. And if you made them all, if you wanted these all the same color, you could match up those lines too if you wanted to. But this would just give you some more options and some more ideas for what you can make with, with these squares. Now, if that's a little too much cutting and re-sewing and everything for you for your first time out, I've got one more simple solution for you. If you take your first squares like this and you sewed your six pieces together and you've got two strips like this, two squares of each one with six stripes, and you cut them only once each, cut each one once, and then you take them and you put like this one here and this one here and this one here and this one here and you've got a very cute block like that as well. Put several of those together and it makes a really cute placemat or table runner or quilt, whatever you want. So that's another cute option. Now I've got one last thing to show you with stripes. Similar, but a little different than the first ones I showed you with the strips. These are only five inch, five and a half inch squares. The strips are five and a half inches long and the end square is five and a half inches square and I'm only using five strips on each one. And you can see I've got five, so you've got two of the same on the outside and the same one in the center. So the same way here. So you would use a total of five stripes of each color to make the two blocks. Now if you make more than two of a kind, like if I made two like this with the with the three stripes on the outside, all with the, the polka dot on the outside, if I made two squares like that plus two squares with the flower on the outside, you can do a lot of things. Like I can take all four of these, make a cute little block like that, and then you can take let me get these out of the way a minute. You can take all four of the accompanying ones and do the same thing. And you get a completely different look. You get an X. Now because there's five in here instead of six, you also always get a nicely centered design, unlike what you get when you're doing six strips. So you can do this. And if you do this design, but with the flowered on the outside, you get a similar effect. Let me just move this out of the way and show you. If you did the flowers like that, I'm going to find all those pieces. You would get this, this, and this. So you would have both of them in this little framed design, but, but a little bit different. And you could just alternate those and make a quilt or a table runner or something, and it would be really cute. And you could also alternate the ones with the X's. So there's a lot of things you can do once you get into having more than, more than two squares of the same cuts. And also when you're using more than two, like if you've got four of those pieces and four of these pieces, you could do something. You could put like these ones with the big stripe on the outside like so. I'm going to get this right. And then these could go on the inside like this. I'll get these right, just hang in there. You could have a cute little design like that. Which is awfully cute. Or the center for could goes this way and this way. And we don't want that kind. We've got to make sure they've all got the same edges. These are all the ones with the flowers in the corners. Got to keep track of our pieces here. And you can go like that, like that. But you can play around with these and have as many different designs and ideas as you, as you can think up of. Um, if you don't like cutting up all your fabric and sewing it together and cutting it apart. An easy way to, to play around with things like this is to cut your initial pieces out of colored paper, construction paper, or even scrapbooking paper and use a couple of really nicely contrasting prints. And you can play around with this stuff all day without wasting any fabric at all. Cut them to tape, tape some colors together or just use you know, a pink here and a blue here or something and play around just to give yourself an idea of, of all the different things you can do before you start cutting up your fabric. Okay, the next shapes we're going to cut apart are triangles. You're going to start once again with two squares each of 
two different colors, contrasting colors. These are four inch squares I'm using right now. And I've got two of each color. Now what you want to do with each of these is you're going to pair them up right sides together just like all the other ones. Pair them up right sides together. Only this time you're going to draw a nice diagonal line down the back of each one. Now you can do it on the lightest side if you've got a darker pen and you can do it on the darker side if you've got a lighter pen. But make sure it's nice and accurate from point to point and make sure when you put your pieces together they're nice and evenly put together. Now what you're going to do with those diagonal lines is you're going to sew a quarter of an inch away from each one on each side like this. This is going to be if it were sewn together you would sew a quarter of an inch away from it on one side and a quarter of an inch away on the other side and then you would cut it on that original line that you drew. You cut it and what you end up with are two squares that are both made up of two triangles like so. And after you do that with both of your pieces you will end up with four triangle pieces and that's where we're going to work from. So now you have four pieces that are all basically the same, same triangle. And what you're going to do is you're going to sew these together, but you're going to put two of these triangles facing away from each other, the two purple ones, and two of them facing the center, like so. So when you put this square together, it looks like that. So we're going to sew these two together and these two together right down here right down here. So I've ironed the pairs together just like this and um, try to remember to keep your your ironing consistent in the same direction. Like I'm always ironing towards the darker half of this. So I'm ironing towards that darker purple and I iron this one towards the darker purple. So then when I put when I flip one around and sew the two together I can nest them nicely together like this. And they go like so. They fit nicely together, like so. So now I'm going to sew this center seam. And now you've got the four pieces sewn together and it makes a nice little block. And actually, just this by itself makes a cute quilt block. Um, but we're going to go a little bit further than that. But you notice how you can get a nice, even, you need a nice, even center. And I've pressed it open on the back for that seam just to reduce the bulk, which will get a little more important as you get this piece smaller. But now what you have to do is find the very center of this in both directions. Now I like to lay it on a grid and I can see that this center follows the line on the grid and this, cent this line follows a grid, a line on the grid. So I'm going to cut this so that the center section is a little bit smaller than the two outside sections. Okay, now I've cut here, which is two and a half inches in from this side, and I've cut here, which is two and a half inches in from this side. And then I cut here, which is two and a half inches in from this edge, and here, which is two and a half inches in from this bottom edge. Now what that gives me is four square corners that are two and a half inches square. These little pieces are two by two and a half. These are two by two and a half, and the very center is two inches. Now, the easiest thing you can do with this, take your outside corners and just swing them around opposite. So this one goes there. And this one goes here, and these two go like so, and then swing this around so it's opposite like so. And then you get a cute little thing that looks like that. But it's really cute when you have more than one of these done and you put them together. So I'm going to sew up a few and show you what your options are. Okay, now I've made four of these with that same kind of design that I just showed you, like so. Now, if you put the four of them together and you put them all with those little, with the lighter squares towards the center, like so, and like so, you get a very pretty quilt block like that. Doesn't that look nice? So you can do that. Or you can flip them around and put the dark ones in the center, like so, which also gives you a really nice square. Um, a nice block. Now if you take those two designs and you alternate them and make a quilt out of it, it looks like you put a lot of little time and sewing a lot of teeny tiny pieces together, which you really didn't. These really go pretty quickly once you, once you get the hang of it. But this gives you a nice idea of what to do with triangles. 
Now we're going to show you one last thing, which is what to do with windmills when you cut them up. This is pretty similar to the triangles, uh, virtually the same when you start out. Um, you're going to need two squares of a dark color and two squares of a light color. Same thing as you did with the triangles. And you're going to take them and you're going to do the same thing, draw a diagonal line straight up the center. And you're going to sew on both sides of the diagonal line. And then you're going to cut on the diagonal line, giving you two pieces like this, just like you did before. You'll have two pieces like this, only you'll have four pieces because you're going to do this twice. This one goes this way and this one goes this way. And you sew those two together like this along this seam here. When you open it, you've got it like that. And you do that with both pairs. So after you've done both pairs, you flip one around and then you have a block like this. Get those out of the way. And then you have a block like this with, and there's your basic windmill pattern block. Now I've got my nine inch square evenly cut and I'm going to just show you where I cut it. I cut it into three inch pieces. I cut here at three inches, three inches, three inches. So now I have nine three inch squares like so. And then what we're going to do is simply take each pair, like this pair, and this pair, and this pair, and this pair. And we're going to swap their places, but I'm going to turn each one clockwise a quarter. So I'm going to turn them clockwise a quarter, and then I'm going to put this one here, and this one here. Then I'm going to take these two, turn them clockwise a quarter, and then trade their places. These two, clockwise a quarter, and trade their places. And these two, clockwise a quarter, and then trade their places. And then, then you, you get this cute little star pattern, like so. And when it's all sewed together, it will look like this. That's a pretty cute little pattern. It's got a nice little windmill in the middle yet. And it's a nice intricate looking little pattern. And there's a couple other ones I can show you. I can move things around a little bit. I'm going to put these back the way they were so you can see exactly where we started from. You take each of these pieces, these four pieces here, and you turn them each like so. So the dark side is facing outward and the lighter side is facing inward, like so. And then take these and put them like so, the corners all in. You get something like this. Big old octagon shaped design. Also kind of cute. People might wonder how the heck you did that. And if you reversed everything, you would get something similar, but very much the same. If you flip these around so the dark triangles are facing outside, like so, you've got a block like that. But you could also flip these around and give yourself a big lighter octagon instead of the darker octagon, like so. So that gives you some idea of what you can do with windmills. And that's about all we have for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching how easy it is to make some basic shapes into some in more intricate looking pattern blocks, and maybe you'll give some of them a try. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and the like button, and we will see you again soon. Have a good day and happy sewing.